today's episode was a little underwhelming. I'm sorry to say it, but I expected so much more from the Motel episode. That's not to say it's terrible, I expected it to be a breath of fresh air, and it was, but it certainly was not as entertaining as I had hoped. It was fun to see the eliminated contestants spend some more time together in a non-competitive environment. I always like seeing that. In fact, it was just adorable to see Gabby and Ellie together and Ellie even warming up to Gret and trying to enjoy herself. That's actually something I wouldn't have minded seeing on the show itself, like when she was still in the game. Her just learning to be less serious and trying to have some more fun. I also love how positive Gret was when talking with her. I also really enjoyed Hunter and Tess together, I keep thinking those two should totally be a couple, or at least they're a much better match than Hunter and Ali. They just get along so well. Granted, therapist Tess goes along with everybody, but Hunter too is always on his very best behavior whenever he's with Tess, whereas Ali kinda brings out the worst in him. He's not perfect, but he's always been a, a pretty good person in both seasons 2 and 3, except of course for when Ali was around as his girlfriend. So when they were in a couple yet, they were both doing great, but once they got together we only got to see the very worst version of Hunter, that is, up until he got to spend some time away from Ali, so it's clear those two are not a good match. This is pretty much it though when it comes to great interactions, because the others just didn't feel that genuine or interesting in general. Take Connor and Miriam, they were basically absent the entire time and they didn't do a single thing or even say one relevant sentence all episode long. I guess it's fine in Connor's case given how he's been present for almost every single episode except for like three I think, so he doesn't really need any more screen time, but Miriam, come on, she barely even talked about Jake. Miriam! It just felt like she didn't care as much about him as she did before. I expected her and also would have loved to see her say how proud she is of Jake for making it to the finale, for making so many friends and doing so great in challenges, instead she didn't even mention him. She's his whole family! It was very cool to see Fiora and Alec together, they're always a great duo to watch, in fact I love how they were playing together and how Alec covered her eyes after Yul's injury, yet uh, they barely got any screen time, it seems like they only had these two obligatory interactions just to remind the audience that they're close and they're on good terms now but nothing more really. And I know that the writers were working with 15 campers and also a few staff members as well, so it's not really easy for a 20 minute episode to take account of all these people, but it just feels like it all went by way too quickly and no interaction really felt that meaningful. At this point, I just think they should have pushed aside some other characters, just like they did with Miriam and Connor, just to give someone else some time to shine. Someone like Aiden, for instance, didn't need that much screen time. In fact, he, Ashley and Lake didn't bring anything to the table, and although Tom did, to some degree, he didn't really bring anything new though. Don't get me wrong, this episode was great to give us an insight on how he feels about Jake and how he still loves him, but we've talked about this time and time again, we don't need to reiterate this. That whole scene of him being upset by the pool with Aiden there to comfort him, it totally could have been replaced with literally anyone else doing literally anything else and actually it would have been a much better use of their time. They could have given Yo or Ellie's mini arcs, like super mini arcs, some more scenes to just develop and feel a little bit more significant ever so slightly, or they could have shown Fjord and Alec work together to find the totems for just a little while longer, but no, Tom and Jake and Aiden, oh god again! And the worst part is that complaining about things being repetitive makes me repetitive, because every single time they reiterate something, I get so frustrated that I feel the need to bring up how unnecessary it is to even mention it, so you're making me look bad Tom. The thing is, Hunter 2 basically did the same as Tom in this episode, but in his case this is all fairly new to us. It's not like he got to talk that much about Ali before, especially now that she's so caught up in the game, so his screen time is justified, yours isn't. Aiden's even less. Although he didn't try to compete in this episode, which makes sense as he neither cares about any of the finalists nor needs the money, James was probably one of my favorites today. It was interesting to say the least how he went up to Yol trying to get him to be more human and I do respect him for not openly insulting Jake despite holding a grudge against him. And even choosing to support him in the end to make Aiden happy is also yeah, a pretty great thing, I swear, I'm liking All-Stars James a thousand times more than season 2 James. 
Now though, maybe this is controversial because he's an asshole, he's a monster, and he's the worst human being to ever walk this earth, but that accident at the grill, quote unquote accident, it was a little too much, honestly. Someone did need to teach him a lesson, and giving Gwen a chance to get her revenge on him, it's actually great, it's great, because the only thing she got to do was eliminating him, which of course is not enough payback after what he made her go through, but hurting him to the point of disfiguring him, it seems a little bit too much. Had she made him fall to the ground and hit his head, giving him a huge bump on his forehead or a scar or something, I wouldn't have minded it, but he fell face first on a freaking grill. That's not a fun thing at all. I do hope he's not gonna stay disfigured forever now, and even though it wouldn't be realistic at all, I do hope that his face is gonna go back to normal in the finale, because I, I can't even look at him, it, it looks so painful. No one deserves that. It was so curious to see him almost change his mind and take stock of his actions, even considering becoming a better person, because uh, I've always considered him as the one absolutely irredeemable character in the entire cast, but now that they gave him this moment, I almost feel bad for him. I know, I know that he's a terrible human being, but this sudden change of heart actually came from a good place. He didn't plan on apologizing to Red just to regain some popularity or save his reputation or get something out of it. He actually felt bad for his actions and felt the need to apologize, the freaking need to apologize, yo. Instead of being mad at her for the grill thing, he wanted to apologize. Of course, the moment he found the totem, he decided to hang on to that last chance of earning some money, so yeah, that kind of makes it all less wholesome, yet this is an interesting cathartic moment that not even Rhea had. I swear, if Yul gets a redemption and Rhea doesn't, <sighs> I'm quitting, that's it. It's challenge time, yet this didn't really feel like a challenge at all, mostly because two of the three totems Crystal tasked the campers with finding were found completely by accident. Again, what is it with these totems? But especially, for heaven's sake, in what sense of the word is the totem in the stairs hidden? English may not be my first language, but I think I got a pretty good grasp of what the word hide means. And that totem, I can assure you, it was not hidden. Not to mention, the people who found them, except for Fiore, they didn't even deserve it. Had they actually actively tried to find them, then I surely would have enjoyed the challenge way more than this. But this, this is so dumb. Although it's pretty cool how the totems were from seasons 1, 2, and 3 respectively. That's a very cool detail, I, I gotta give it to them, yes. But it's still frustrating. Because of that one single genuine sentiment that he felt, I'd say that Yul is probably the MVP of the episode, I know, shocking, I know. Along with Fiore, of course, who did just great during the challenge, and I'm so glad she's gonna be part of the finale, and also Nina. She was great today, I think. I know that this show is not supposed to be realistic, Nina herself is a sentient puppet with thoughts and willpower, but here they took this to a whole new level. I'm still undecided whether her using telekinesis is something I find hilarious and also intriguing, or if it's super weird and also way too much for a show like this. It doesn't make any sense for something like this to happen on this venture camp, but it is freaking interesting. One great aspect about this episode, though, is that it gave the final three some pretty interesting helpers. In fact, I kinda thought the helpers wouldn't bring that much to the table, with Hunter helping Ali, Tom or Ashley helping Jake, and possibly Gret or Ellie helping Rhea in exchange for a cut of the money. Instead, these three helpers are probably gonna be so much better to add more attention and stakes to the final challenge. Although I so would've loved to see Ellie as one of the helpers, either competing against Jake or even with him. That would have been so much fun. I still don't understand though why Fiore would pick Ali instead of Rhea, because even though the gamer, she was initially willing to work with you, she ultimately didn't. And even though Rhea isn't trustworthy, that's true, you don't really need trust in a challenge like this, where the only way for Rhea to win is for you two to cooperate. If she were to sabotage you, then she would also sabotage herself, so how does that make any sense? Choose Rhea. At this point though, if the helpers too can win some money, then this really changes who I'm rooting for. Because if Jake, someone who doesn't quite need the money that much, wins, then James too, a millionaire, would also earn some more money. But 
that would be super lame. Then of course, if Rhea wins, Yul would earn that $100,000, which would be a catastrophe because imagine giving Yul the money. So I guess I'm pretty much forced to root for Ali here because she does need the money and also, and more importantly, because I totally wouldn't mind having Fiore win some money as well. I still like Jake a tiny little bit more than Ali, but I certainly like Fiore a hundred thousand times more than those two. Also, this is completely unrelated, but is it just me or does the motel look so much cheaper and crappier during the day? It looked way more decent at night, and in general, I expected it to be so much better than this. I imagined it would be so much cooler on the inside or even the back, but it really was as cheap as everyone said it was. I don't know why I'm surprised, honestly. With that being said though, let me know your thoughts on the episode, on the helpers, on the upcoming finale, on who you guys root for, and whether the presence of these specific helpers is actually changing who you guys are rooting for. That's actually the case for me. I never would have rooted for Ali, but if her victory also allows Fiore to win some money, then you go Ali, you're the best! But anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with the finale part 1. Ciao!